when we landed on Juno Beach, we got a surprise of our life. The German army rose up, and believe you me, we had a very real fight. Because the ship is pretty good about the horse around the shoulder. Okay, it's pretty sick to go to the car. More to go back to look. I just don't see it. You're going to dive, huh? Dive bombers. The Germans gave an order. Escaping is no longer a sport. They shot him through the hand and through the neck. The Second World War should never be forgotten. It's a thing to remember all our life. Clifford Swain, Louis Roy, and Paul Delorme are but three of the thousands of Métis who volunteered to fight for Canada in the Second World War. Many never came home. And for those who did, another, longer battle faced them. One that would last three quarters of a century. The road to recognition. From the earliest days, the Métis have struggled to gain recognition of their place as a distinct rights-bearing people in Canada. When they saw their rights being threatened, they took organized political action, leading to the first Métis provisional government under Louis Riel in 1870, and to the admission of Manitoba as a province within Canada. You look at 1870, establishment of the province of Manitoba, where Métis had to take sort of military force to try to defend their rights and their, their communities, their families, their, and their children. Militia was sent out here, and basically it wasn't to keep the peace, but it was an occupying force, and uh, they actually inflicted uh, great pain upon the Métis nation through murders, rapes, killings, uh, beatings, uh, burning down of homes, and this is where the Métis diaspora began. Then again in 1885, where our people stood up for their rights again at Batoche uh, after the final battle at Batoche. You know, our leader gave himself up and then was tried and executed. Over the intervening years, I say through the script system, where they dealt with us as individuals, not as a collective, we were reduced to basically the margins of, of society. We became refugees in our own homeland. And yet, Canada would come to count on the Métis as allies in international wars, in the Boer War, and then the First World War. Following the 1885 resistance, our people, you know, didn't hesitate to enlist in World War I, you know, to defend, you know, democracy, uh, to defend those, you know, less fortunate than them. The First World War, uh, it was only 30-something years later, they come knocking on our door and say, can you come and help us? These Métis are good hunters, they're good with guns, they're very well prepared, they're military people in many ways. They always had that talent to be good with their rifle hunting because, you know, they, they were trappers and fishermen and they both obtained those skills in the woods. The Métis Nation has never shirked its responsibilities. Our people, men and women, you know, have been there to, to assist when assistance is needed. Métis veterans served with distinction in World War I, but when they returned after the war, little had changed at home. We struggled again to survive, and you know, we're called the road alongs people. We had no home, no land, no more. I remember when I was a young fellow, the neighbors were from Europe. Oh, he's only half breed. We were put down, the Métis people. 1939, on the eve of World War II, 
the Métis would suffer an historic injustice at the hands of the Canadian government. The Prairie Farm Rehabilitation Administration deemed certain lands across the prairies to be marginal. They were to be expropriated for settler farmers to use. Standing in the way, the Métis community of St. Madeline. They went and uh, burned down our entire village for cattle. And this is 1939, not the 1800s. This is not 1839 or 1870 or 1885. In 1939, they burned the community of St. Madeline down to the ground, the church, the school, every house. And our people had nowhere to live. Community members who'd been on the road seeking work returned to find their homes aflame. In all, 35 homes were burnt to the ground. To make matters worse, the government shot all the dogs in the settlement, falsely citing disease control as the reason. The government also promised to give back equivalent land to the Métis, provided their property taxes had been paid up. That provision all but assured they would never be compensated. To this day, the Métis of St. Madeline still don't have their land. In September of 1939, the long-anticipated Second World War was underway. Canadians were asked to yet again pitch in and help, including the Métis, who had so recently suffered at the hands of the federal government. So a lot of them from Métis villages that went to fight for a country that still would not respect them as a people, still would not respect them as a nation, and give them, in fact, freedom less valuable than animals for cattle. The Métis, in large numbers, came forward to defend not only Canada, but a world that it didn't know. There's no such thing as a Duke of War, a Bahapri, a Frenchman. We're all Canadians. We went by large, large constituencies. Some, some of our villages were emptied out of all the men. A lot of them registered from Cumberland House today paddled to the paw by canoe and they gave up the nice wild country to go and enlist. But just like the previous generation, these young Métis would be forever scarred by their experiences. I thought when I enlisted in the army, they told us, you see the world. I thought that was great. But when I landed in Normandy, and saw the slaughter of man killing man. There's something wrong. We heard a lot of stories of what happened to them uh, in terms of you know being captured, being prisoners of war, being tortured. Many came home broken, really broken, because what they saw the the terror, the bloodshed, just the mis the misery that they had to live in and fight in. The fighting in Europe came to an end in May of 1945, but Métis vets, those who managed to survive the war, would face a much longer struggle, the road to recognition. Métis veterans had served Canada with distinction in the Second World War, as their parents had a generation earlier. But once again, they found their sacrifices made no difference when they got back home. When they came home, it was even worse again. After World War II, the promise that they give the economic head start to them was not there. When they got off the trains, there was, there was no recognition, no, no uh, fanfare, nobody to greet them. A lot of them told me, we thought we'd get a, a, a section of land for farming, just like the other veterans or farm equipment, something like that. They never got anything. Métis veterans were shut out of post-war benefits and programs given to other Canadians and to which they were entitled. Métis ex-soldiers who applied for loans and grants that other Canadians qualified for faced indifference and discrimination. All of them were promised a head start when they left. Uh, if you come alive, come home, we'll, we'll give you a head start to rebuild your life and uh, rebuild the potential to take care of your family. Some were told, go back to your trap lines, go back to your fishing, that's where you guys belong, go back north, you know. 
I think the racism, racism and discrimination was still strong against us as a people stemming all the way from 1800s. There's a lot of people actually turned to alcohol, the men uh, turned to alcohol for some sanity in their minds because they couldn't take the horror and the terror they saw. Treated as individuals, not as part of a nation, the Métis vets simply vanished back into their homeland. I went back to Prince Albert and I met all the guys that came back, just like ducks of a feather, we kind of flock together. That helped us get over the rough part of life. Decades passed, and slowly the federal government started to be more receptive to indigenous peoples and organizations. In 2002, Veterans Affairs Canada documented the discrimination and outright fraud perpetuated against the country's indigenous war veterans. Deliberately excluded were Métis war vets. If their situation were to change, it would require a shift in the entire relationship between Canada and the Métis nation. In 2003, Clément Chartier and Kathy Hodgson Smith, along with veterans Charlie Fosnev and Francis Goodon, traveled to France for the opening of the Juno Beach Centre and to visit the well-tended graveyards of Canadian soldiers. Victor Curry, that's the one. VV, private. Yeah. That's the guy we're looking for. There he is. Is your brother-in-law? That's my brother-in-law, yeah. Europe had always shown appreciation for Canada's war vets. The time had come for the Canadian government to do the same. Prime Minister Jean Chrétien was there at the opening and Charlie made his way up there and we had the camera and he shook it, Chrétien's hand and wouldn't let it go right away. He told Chrétien, you know, you have to deal with us. We still have to be dealt with, you know, the Métis veterans. Then in 2005, thanks to a grassroots fundraising movement, the Manitoba Métis community raised over $100,000 to send a delegation of Métis veterans to the Juneau Beach Centre. They raised all the funds without any help from the federal government. Minister David Chartrand led the delegation to Juneau, but when they got there, conspicuous by its absence, was any acknowledgement of the Métis. As we entered the last, nearly the final day to go to the museum, our veterans, you can see, were looking for their community, their nation, their culture, and to find nothing. I made a promise to them when I got home. I was a champion of this cause, and, and along with our national president, Clement, and we were going to push this issue and, and not give up on it, that we would correct the wrongs. They didn't have one artifact of the Métis, nothing. Not a sash, not a fiddle, nothing to commemorate our people. So that's when it was decided something needs to be done about this. We were able to convince then Minister Chuck Strahl to work with us. Back home, after hearing about the lack of recognition at the Juno Beach Centre, the momentum from the Métis community started building. When we announced this at our annual assembly, people lined up uh, by, by the hundreds and donated five, ten, twenty dollars to make sure that uh, we sent a message. There, some were going to the microphone saying, this twenty dollars was for my grandfather who died in, in overseas. And no one said, this is for my grandson, this is for my granddaughter, to send a message that they're making, they're going to be out in Jota Beach and we're going to have our own part of our museum there. November of 2009, a huge delegation of Métis, including World War II Métis veterans and Korean veterans, went to Juno Beach and we were able to establish an exhibit representing, you know, the Métis. The centerpiece of the new exhibition was a Red River cart, built by the Métis and brought over from Canada. We did it. Congratulations. Today, we honor the memories of these men and women, and we honor our veterans who are with us today. And those back home in Canada, we say thank you. Now we have the River Cart there, we have our, our sash, we have other artifacts that resemble and respect the Métis veterans that went there to, to fight for freedom and honor. Around the same time back home, Leonard Morin was appointed Minister for Veterans Affairs for the Métis Nation Saskatchewan. He too was looking for a way to honor Métis vets. 
came up with the idea that I had in Cumberland is to build a monument. From there, we started lobbying. That was in 2008. And we lobbied and lobbied and, oh, it was terrible. I just about quit. Finally, in 2014, 2014, we got it done. It took six years. It wasn't easy, but it happened. The monument proudly stands in the heart of the Métis Nation, Batoche. It includes the names of thousands of Métis men and women who served, both living and dead. And there's space for more, as more are identified. There was a f number that we started with at 3,000, but it kept going higher, and uh, we're, we're just about close to 5,000, and still some people say, uh, you know, my uncle's missing or my brother or something like that. So there's more names to be added. And as the monument came to completion, there was progress on the political front as well. The 2015 election of Justin Trudeau's Liberal Party meant there was a government in Ottawa fully committed to reconciliation. In those dialogues I had with him, uh, I indicated to him, there are certain things that I would ask you. If you are going to do this, if you're willing to give your word that you would settle with the veterans. And, and so he became Prime Minister, he fulfilled his word. This lobby to get recognition for you know, the World War II Métis Nation veterans was a long one uh, and a hard one. And finally, in this year's budget, uh, the federal government allocated $30 million to go to World War II Métis Nation veterans in terms of uh, basically recognition of their contribution, uh, you know, to the Second World War. Armed with a $30 million settlement from the Canadian government in 2019, the Métis Nation set out to compensate remaining Métis veterans and their families. President David Chartrand has been spearheading the effort to find surviving World War II Métis Nation veterans and presenting them with uh, $20,000 checks as part of the compensation and acknowledgement of their service to, to Canada. The Métis now has been able to settle with Canada. So all living veterans and those that die within the last three years will get a check for $20,000. Oh my God. <laughs> oh boy. That's yours. <laughs> You're more than welcome. You earned every cent. Thank you very much. It's yours, George. Dad, it's yours. This man did a lot during his lifetime. It's our duty and our responsibility as lady citizens of the Lady Nation to honor him and to give him the respect that he deserves. If we're going to be a nation of people, we need to honor our heroes. And as far as I'm concerned, Louis Roy from Beauval is a hero. Nice people come up to my home this morning and they're here to present the most important thing in my life is money that I never expect in my life. I tell you the, the pride that's in there. They look at the check and they say, thank you. It's about time. It's about time they recognize me. It's about time they, they show respect. There's two components to the settlement that we had with Canada. Uh, we pushed Canada very strongly on the financial settlement that should have replenished what should have took place in 1945. A second component to that, in all my consultations with so many veterans across our prairies, all of them, and the majority of them, openly stated they wanted an apology. They want to hear an apology in this country. And on September 10th, 2019, the long overdue apology 75 years in the making, finally came. 
We apologize that the benefits offered to the veterans after the war were not designed to meet the needs of the Métis veterans. We regret that our country has taken three quarters of a century to address the concerns of Métis veterans who joined Canada's call to arms during the Second World War. Addressing these long-lasting concerns is a significant step forward in the process of reconciliation with the Métis people. Now I think our veterans, can, those that have left us, can rest in peace that this country, no matter how long it took, has done the right thing. Reconciliation is real, and this is what I think leads to a relationship building, an understanding of each other's differences in cultural heritage, but also looking at all of those things that should have been done right then, and although it wasn't done right, we still can fix it. Every veteran matters, whether it's in today's war or yesterday's war. Every veteran matters to Canada. I can rest. That file is closed. I'm finished with it. And, and it'll, I hope, as I said, it'll last for generations. Apology accepted. Compensation received. Memorials being placed. 2020 marks the 150th anniversary of the Métis joining Canada under the provisional government of Louis Riel. On the eve of that anniversary, the Métis veterans who served so valiantly in Canada's wars at last received what they had been denied for so long. Recognition. To the Canadian nation that often treated them terribly, the Métis were a steadfast ally. That fact stands in testimony to the character and compassion of the Métis people. The task for the next generations will be to remember, lest we forget. I'll say the same thing to my father. Mistakes are made. Remember the mistakes and try not to repeat the same thing. <laughs>